Take a deep breath. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, to all my worm danglers out there. Uh, today is uh, episode two of Garage Talk. Um, today we're going to do the follow-up to the last episode, the episode one, which was the murder episode, uh, where I talked about the murder that I had witnessed as a young child. Uh, I was 13, 14 years of age. I guess I wasn't a child, I was just a teenager, but whatever. Um, first of all, I want to start out. I want to correct a few things. Um, I know I said that my brother picked my mom up from the house that day uh, uh, after Ed had been shot and killed. Uh, my brother, I said my brother had came home to pick her up and take her to the hospital. Uh, I was corrected by that. It was actually my cousin. Uh, she came over and picked him up or picked him up my mother and took her to the hospital and she did say when she got there that ed was still laying on the ground by the mailbox so pretty traumatizing obviously because he had at that point had probably been laying there for quite some time uh obviously he was deceased like i said he, he was actually killed instantly um that was one thing the other thing um was my brother had told me that they had actually went my mom and ed the night before had went to uh, the basketball game at the high school, but they didn't go to watch his son. They actually went to watch his daughter dance in the dance team or for the dance team. Uh, so that was one thing that I wanted to make sure I corrected. Um, not that any of that really makes makes the story any different or anything different from what happened, I guess. I, I don't even know how to explain it, but the fact is I, I wanted to make sure I, it's, it's correct. Um, those were a couple of details that I couldn't really remember. I still don't really remember how my brother, I don't remember if he got to the hospital. I don't remember where he came in. Um, that was one thing I just, I could not remember how, how and when he, he was notified and how he got back to the house or how he got with my mom or whatever. Because like I said, after the hospital, I went home, I went home with my dad and he lives several, uh, like 30 miles away. And uh, I remember staying there that night and I didn't come home for a couple days. Um, so that was the biggest thing. Um, also, I want to kind of go over uh, life after witnessing a murder. Um, like I said, after that had all happened, I went to court and went through all that. And that was one of the things that was very, very hard to do. Um, not only was the murder itself hard to go through, but try going to a courthouse and sitting there in a courthouse. And this is, this is a, 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 an image... That is extremely hard to get out of your head um, or memory, I guess you should say. I'm sitting in the courthouse. One of the very first times we had to go to court, uh, sitting in the courthouse, and people are going around passing out, I want to say it was blue ribbons, I think it was, in support of the guy who shot Ed. That, is, let me explain to you, being a teenager, a young teenager, and having someone basically flaunting in front of you that they had supported this guy for killing somebody. I don't know about you, and, and I'm, I understand people think different things, but wow, how do you support a murderer? Somebody who, now, it's, it'd be different if, if there was a slight chance he was innocent. You know, that I, I could see that. Um, but somebody who, who did this, admitted to did this, turned themselves in for doing this, and is pleading basically guilty, you know, uh, <laughs> how, could, how, do you, how is everybody in the town supporting that? You know, that, that was always something that got me. How are they always on his side? Um, man, let me tell you, that was hard. That was one of the hardest things, to drive around town and you'll see in people's front yards uh, a big blue ribbon on their tree. Yeah, I, I can't even explain to you how that made me feel. Um, that was also along with the, the I mentioned the uh, 
it wasn't Facebook back then, but we had like a group chat on one of the school websites or something, and uh, reading the the messages about people about how oh he deserved it he you know he did this and he did. these people didn't know him they just heard rumors and that's that's the worst thing don't believe a rumor that somebody is telling you because just because they say oh he was a bad person he beats his kids well okay he, maybe he spanked him in public once and now you're saying that or maybe his ex-wife who is basically trying to you know make him look bad for whatever court reasons or whatever you know maybe get more money out of him from the divorce i don't know I, i'm not saying that's what happened but i'm just saying in general you know that's how rumors start and then those rumors hurt somebody and it's really hard for somebody like me who's sitting there going wow none of these people even have a clue what's going on or even know this guy or, no, or really know the other guy and I, don't, I know I'm rambling here, but it's just, you know, things that are all in my mind, especially with what, you know, happened. It, that was just a big part of my life for a long time was, was how people can support him. But, I mean, I guess it is what it is. It's, it's years ago now, um, you know, so whatever. Uh, I guess that kind of made, it, that, that had kind of made me who I am. Um, just like... You know, I'm not gonna get political, but I know like in, in politics, like there's there's people that I believe in and you know, do I agree with everything they do? No, but I support them because they're trying to do the right thing and the people who support the other person who is blatantly, obviously doing horrible things and people support that and I, I just don't get that. So um, I, I think that, that this murder and, and those instances in my life um, have made me who I am today uh, in that general area. I know that's kind of hard. I, I'm not very good at explaining it, but I, ho I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. Let's see, what else was there? I, life after it was just weird um, because I, I still had to go to school, so I still had to go with kids who were asking me questions, and I, you know, so it was just really weird to kind of walk around in school and, and people, you know, knowing what's going on in town, and they, you know, think you're weird or think you're different. You, you know, you witnessed a murder, blah, 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 whatever. Um, also, you know, like I said, I was in eighth grade. So I went through all summer just kind of trying to stay not really in the in the limelight, I guess you'd say. Um, and I don't even think I went to the fair that year because I just, just didn't want to be around people. Um, going into my freshman year of high school was a whole different story. Uh, my freshman year of high school was very weird because... The first couple days, um, I realized that I had I had a class, and I think I also had a PE class with Ed's son, and that was very hard and very different because I'm like I don't know how what to do or how to act because now I have to interact with him, and you know everything that was going on it was just very very strange. I ended up having to get myself uh, changed into a different. Um, classroom uh and for like my pe i had to get it changed so i was in a different pe class so i wasn't in with him too just to try to keep myself separated um later on in life though i've actually got to know him i, I think he's actually a really good guy um ed's son is is a really nice kid I, i've never met ed's daughters but i have met ed's son and uh, i think he's a really good guy uh, i have nothing against him nothing wrong not, you know there's just nothing against him i i like him he's a good guy so also, one of the things I wanted to bring up too was, you know, with this whole life after this, um, uh, when I finally did go home uh, after the first couple of days of staying with my dad, um, I remember I couldn't get myself to walk to my front door uh, because right outside the front door was the mailbox. This is where everything went down. Um, and that's where Ed had been shot and killed. Um, so I remember for, man, it probably been, I don't know, a month or two maybe. I couldn't, I couldn't get myself to walk through the front door. I had to go, had to go through the garage or I would enter the house through the back door because I just couldn't get myself to go out there. I wouldn't go out to get the mail. Nothing. I, I could not go out there. I, I remember before trial, the, um, some of the detectives uh, and the crime scene investigators came to the house and they wanted me to come out and talk to them. And that was, that was hard. That was very, very hard to come out to talk to anybody about what had happened. And I had to stand out there where this had all gone down. So that was very, very hard for me. Uh, 
like I said, at that point, I think shortly after that is when I actually started to walk back out to the mailbox again because I, I had to go out there to show them where everybody was standing and this and that and kind of talk to those investigators. So shortly after that, I finally got on my feet and said, you know what, it's time to just get over it. Uh, and, I, and I started living my life a little bit different after that. Um, I also, um, I think it was my freshman year, uh, it was probably still my eighth grade year, I think. Um, going home, I didn't go home after school. I actually went to my buddy Chris's house. Um, him and his family took good care of me. Um, I, I went over there and I would hang out and just kind of wait for my mom to get off work. That way I wasn't at home by myself. I was, I was you know, I was a kid. I, I, I was very scared to be at home by myself or, you know, I didn't know what anybody was going to do to me, especially with all the rumors and stuff that were going around town about, you know, how I was a liar and this and that, you know. So it, it, it made me very nervous and, and it's probably something who later in life here, you know, I, I've got an issue with paranoia anyway. Uh, paranoia and anxiety are pretty much my life now. Um, and, I, and I work on that every day. Uh, you can ask my wife, I, I work on those things constantly. Um, but I, I think the fact that I was so worried about what could happen to me or, or somebody in town maybe trying to come after me for something, um, that I'm not even sure what the right words here are. That that really worried me a lot. So that's why I try never try not to go home as much. Uh, eventually, as life went on, it, it made it a lot easier. I could go home and be by myself and stay by myself. You know, um, so I you know I worked through it obviously. But I think that has affected me later in life a lot more than I have ever realized. Um, and I I don't, I don't know how to explain that to you. I guess uh, that's something I guess you just kind of figure out going through all this is, is the anxiety uh, I, I have I'll be real honest with you I don't talk a lot about it with people but I have severe anxiety I have actually been diagnosed with severe anxiety I'm on a very high uh, dosage I guess of anxiety medicine uh, which is actually probably why I'm sweating now because that medicine makes me sweat really bad um, but I'm on this medication to keep myself calmer um, one of my issues uh, is with time, with trying to be on time for things. Um, I'm not sure that that's really related to the to the whole murder thing, but I know that my anxiety and stuff started with the murder and everything, and then later on in life, trying to prove myself and trying to be on time and trying to, you know, with my job, I had a, I had a job uh, as a truck driver where I had to be places on time at a certain time, otherwise you just screwed my entire day up. and that blew the whole time deal, being on time deal, just up real big and, and that affected my anxiety even more. Uh, so it's just kind of, of a snowball effect in life with anxiety. Uh, but I'm working on it now. Uh, I, I, I've, I've actually been to a counselor um, and when I say counselor, I, 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 we went uh, and talked to a lady a couple times. It really didn't help. Uh, which is something that I try to st I like to stress to people that if you're gonna go to a counselor you need to know that you have to tell them everything and I'm not that kind of person uh, so a, a counselor doesn't help me um, I just gotta deal with it on my own work work my own way through it I'm not very one for being a I don't like to argue with people I'm not confrontational uh, unless you push me to be if I have to be confrontational you probably don't want to be around me you don't want to be on the receiving end of it um, not that I'm trying to sound like a Billy Badass here or nothing, but I'm, it takes a lot to get me to be that confrontational person. Usually I'm the one that just tries to take the higher road and walk away. Um, but anyway, that's just kind of how things have been. Um, I don't know what else to tell you guys about life after murder. I just know that, yeah, it affected me a lot. You know, um, it's affected me um, emotionally and mentally uh, over the years. Um, I don't talk about it. This is actually really the first time I've talked about it. I've, I've actually gotten a lot of praise for talking about it. Um, if you guys know somebody who has had any kind of incidents like this, you know, and they want to talk about it, have them give me a shout. You know, we can talk. Uh, I would love to love to hear some more stories from people who who have had similar instances like this and how life has been for them. Um, so, you know, don't be afraid to give me a shout. You guys can hit me up on all the social medias. Um, you can actually just search Worm Dangler TV. You can find me about anywhere. Um, or you can just hit me up on my personal page, you know, just send me a message. Say, hey, you know, this happened to me, you know, whatever. 
I have no problem talking about it. It's my problem talking about it in public. I think is a little harder. Uh, I don't really go around and say, "Hey, oh, I witnessed a murder, or whatever." I, I've, I've never been that person. But you know, if you guys want to talk to me, I'll talk to you. You know, I have no problem with that. So anyway, um, that's all I got for you this week. I tried to keep it short. I know I rambled a bunch, uh, but hey, uh, you know, it's, it's who I am. I, I just wanted to give you guys kind of a little bit of a, an update on it. I, these are the questions that some people have asked me since the last video. Uh, hopefully, as I do more of these, it'll be easier to sit here and talk to the camera and get my thoughts out. Um, I know that was one of my biggest problems. My wife and I have talked about it before. Is I have a hard time getting the words out of my mouth uh, to describe myself or to explain myself. Uh, so hopefully, these videos will do that for me and help me out on that and help you guys out too. You know, I, I want you guys to, to get to know me better. And like I said, if you if you guys want to talk or shout something out to me, you know, hit me up. Find me. I'm here. <laughs> so uh, anyway see you guys next time on uh, another episode of worm dangler tv garage talk episode number two today next time number three because that's how numbers work okay that was stupid sorry uh anyway see you guys next time bye